you guys, what a fucking journey this has been. <laughs> um, this, or I guess today is December 12th, or today is, not I guess, but it actually is December 12th, 2018. It's a Wednesday, it's about 7.38 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Yeah, daylight savings in it. Um, right now, <laughs> I am recording this in my apartment in Inglewood. Um, and I just, shit's been crazy. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking about, you know, I was reflecting earlier about, you know, with my partner, which actually is a different partner, um, than my partner when I started recording this. Um, but I was talking with him about, um, where I was last year at this time. And if someone told me I would be where I am right now, I would just be like, what? <laughs> like, um, I don't know about that. And so I have learned so much over the past year or so. And, you know, um, solstice is coming up pretty soon along with the end of the year, winter solstice, you know, and along with the end of the year is coming up very, very soon. And so I'm just like doing a lot of reflection. You know, today is the first day I actually felt grounded. I haven't felt grounded in really, oof, I mean... It's been a long time. Um, I can't even think about this year. There's been so much movement. You know, I, last year, last note, or I guess it was December 31st was when I, you know, was done at my job. I quit my job by this time. I put my notice in. Probably I think I put my notice in, in November. But I quit my job. I finished it up by the end of the year. And, you know, ever since then, it's been this, like, very hard you know, ups and downs and none of it I regret, but definitely a very like challenging time. And, you know, ultimately I feel that it was because, or, and I know that it was because I was breaking through my belief systems, breaking through old patterns. And so, um, with that in general, I, you know, I just, yeah, it's not easy, folks. And so I'm just going to talk about how I'm feeling right now. And I'm feeling so much love and so much joy um, with where I am at the moment. And um, so recently, you know, uh, I didn't even, I probably should have listened to the last recording before this, but I don't even remember when it was. It was definitely months ago. Um, let's see, you know, I moved to Denver a couple months ago in September you know, I've been working and facilitating women's circles in Denver, and I recently have been um, working at and, you know, have become the shop manager within a couple months um, at a apothecary here in Denver. And so um, September, I was with my ex, who is now my ex, and um, it was, it felt so forced you know, I remember before we even moved to Denver, my ex was, you know, we had had our, you know, typical, you know, I don't see arguments as like deal breakers. I don't really have fights and my arguments aren't like yelling, you know, every so often, like say if both of us have been drinking, that's when it could escalate to that point. But like, you know, really my arguments with partners, with lovers are just more so like, conversations, like conflicting views. And so, um, you know, I remember before we moved to Denver, he was like, should we be moving to Denver together? That stuck with me for like, even till now, you know? Um, and when we went through our breakup recently and, um, and so I remember, you know, everything just felt forced. We couldn't find the right place. And then we found this beautiful home in Capitol Hill, right near Cheeseman Park. I mean, it was a dream. It was, you know, somewhat of my dream home. It had everything I wanted, 
you know, I got a library, even though, you know, I could, I'm like, what, how do I have a library already? Like, this was something that was further on my list. I had my own office, which is a sunroom, you know, it was, it was nice. It was old. It was over a hundred years old. And, um, just like everything that I loved and everything that I thought I wanted, um, or at least what I did want, but it wasn't serving. Um, you know, and I just felt like, you know, this whole time I kept forcing my partnership and I don't want to get deep into that, but everything just felt like forced and very uncomfortable. And I had started the round of Luna Goddess Circle, the circle that I facilitated, and I started it. In this round, we chose a um, a goddess to embody, uh, which my goddess, she was just an ancient Lumerian um, water goddess, but... Um, my intention, you know, we also started with, start each circle with an intention. And my intention was, um, to embody self-reliance because I was beginning to really learn and understand what codependency really means. And I realized that, you know, I have always depended on partners for like, um, you know, personal security, whether it be like using their car or, you know, them making dinner or them making, you know, um, and recently once I quit my job, it was definitely like, oh, my partner, you know, financially takes care of me in a sense, you know, like, um, and, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, especially because I knew it was going to be temporary. It was just like extra support to help me get on my feet. But I think, um, the place that it was coming from, like the dependency aspect was, was really hard. And then my partner or my ex-partner, he, you know, had some, once I finally actually looked at his chart and then I, you know, had been studying evolutionary astrology since the summer. And so once I, um, you know, looked at his chart from that perspective, I was like, holy shit, like he has, you know, some power dynamics associated with relationships and money. And it was like Scorpio Libra stuff. So it was just like, you know, like holding, you know, it was, it was basically, he always wanted to help other people and hand, you know, do handouts for people, but he would never let people help them help him, which was an issue. Um, so it was like, he had power over other people, um, which was ultimately, the breaking point for, you know, our relationship. And it wasn't his fault. It's more so just like, I became aware of that. And I was like, whoa, like what's going on, which made sense because the way I entered the relationship was really based on like, um, you know, like the whole dependency. Oh, I'm going to give this person this because I'm using his car or whatever. Like I'm literally, it was like, I'm going to have sex with him. Cause I don't, you know, my fuck buddy moved out or moved out of, out of town or out of state. And so I'm like, Hmm, well, I'm driving Matt's car. So maybe I should put out, that's how our relationship started. And without this aware, awareness of, you know, where I am now, like that wasn't really surprising to me when I realized that our relationship was like, you know, kind of that type of relationship. So anyways, um, yeah. So when it came to self-reliance, I started really, um, even before the circle, I had started really changing the way I looked at things. I was working with the law of attraction, which I still am. Um, I was definitely releasing a lot and calling forth and working with guides a lot. I had been channeling, um, heavy earlier this year. And I mean, obviously I still do it, but I was definitely studying with, um, a mentor who helped me, Um, learn different techniques with um, frequency management and just like being able to bring forth like angels and, you know, ascended masters. And I, you know, I started, I just started astral traveling and all these things opened up. And so as I was opening myself up to these new levels of consciousness, you know, I had begun to see friends, you know, I mean, I had best friends ghost me. I had people, you know, just disappear or be upset with me because of decisions that I was making. And like everything I do, I am not doing with the intentions of hurting anyone. I am doing this. I'm, I'm looking out for myself is what I'm looking out for. And I am focused on a path and that might not always be comfortable for other people. It's definitely not always comfortable for myself. And, you know, I do, you know, I'm not going to say sorry for the way I make people feel because I'm, you know, 
it's hard to not say sorry, but, you know, unfortunately it's unfortunate that our comfort zones, you know, can't, or we can't coexist with each other because, you know, some people have this level of comfort and they need have these values and these needs and these desires. And that's great. And I have my values and my needs and my desires, and that's great. And so I have been focusing on myself and I've realized, you know, what, and all of us do this, but, you know, we put our own values and needs on the back burner, um, for other people, which is not always bad. But when you begin to suppress your, you know, your um, sense of self, your truth, you know, what you really, your calling, when you get, when you start suppressing all of that for other people's comfort zones or to stay within, you know, the norms of society, follow the rules, you know, um, you know, really give way to others' core belief systems or, you know, our culture's belief systems that have been placed upon us, then, you know, that's when it becomes an issue. And so I had decided to break away from that. I decided to, even when I started, like my intention wasn't really to follow my intuition, which obviously it was, but I never said that out loud or I never like thought about it in the, you know, November or or however long ago this last year, this time last year. Um, but ultimately that's what ended up happening. I was going with my, my intuition and, you know, my past relationship with my ex, um, before I quit my job, I was making more money waiting fucking tables. I was making a shit ton of money. Um, and that was my comfort zone. I have been fucking in restaurants since I was like 14 years old. Um, never really, had to worry about money because I was always working in restaurants and I just, and I always had at least one job and, you know, I knew how to play my cards right because I knew what I was doing. Um, and my partner was comfortable. My ex was comfortable with that. And so then when I decided to quit my job, you know, I disturbed his comfort zone, his, you know, his personal security. And he tried to act like it was cool, but obviously it wasn't, um, which was ultimately what, you know, was our demise. And so, but I did not care. I told him multiple times. I'm like, you know, like I will be in a shack. I don't give a fuck. Like I won't let anything get in my way because I have to do this. I cannot walk back in that restaurant one more time and ask someone, do they want fucking, you know, how do they want their eggs or whatever the fuck, you know, or do they want pancakes or French toast or whatever? Um, Do you want maple syrup with that? You know, like stupid shit. Like I can't do that anymore. I refuse. Um, and I don't care. It's going to take blood, sweat and tears. All right, I'm ready, you know? Um, and so with that in mind, what was I talking about? Comfort zones. So yeah, I, I disrupted his comfort zone. Um, and that was our, our issue. Um, and then I moved to Denver. We moved to Denver together and, you know, it was, we were pretty much on the outs and, So long story short, we broke up and, you know, I'm always lately I've been going with the flow. Like I'm, you know, like it was literally when we broke up and I'm sorry, this is like a ranting thing, but I just want to talk about how crazy my life. It it hasn't even been crazy, but to other people, it probably, you know, it is kind of crazy, Um, especially when I get to where I'm at now. And so um, with my um, when I broke up with my ex or during that time when I knew When I I knew that it was over, when his smell just really like turned me off and it wasn't like a smell of BO. It wasn't as like, because I would even mention like, Hey, you should probably take a shower because you know, he's a biker. And so obviously like, you're going to smell like sweat and you're going to smell like not necessarily even like BO, but yeah. Okay. You need a shower he would shower and it would still be there. And it was something energetic. It was just off. Like it was so foul and it wasn't him, but it was like, just like, you know, my guides know that I, especially now at this moment, I'm so in tune to like, I listen to the signs, you know, as much as I can, especially like psychic sense. Like I didn't even want to, I didn't even want to like hug him and he could tell. So what even like, even though, you know, I was standoffish. He could tell. So it wasn't, it was like both parties were noticing that there was a separation. And so I had decided to trust my instincts and it was literally with that. And I, there, I remember there was one night and I was feeling like, you know, so 
upset and really like not sure what was going on and I was just crying and I was just like and I don't beg and I don't pray to my my guides you know and Mother Mary and Yeshua are like my primary guides you know I call forth Lilith and Kali and Rantara when I really need shit to be done but I didn't at this time I was just like I need to know let me have a breakthrough and you know I was working with Tantra you know, I still have been. And so I like, I think I had masturbated that same, like very shortly. I think I was crying in the shower. I got out, masturbated. Um, and I had this crazy fucking orgasm. Like it was, oh my God, it was crazy. And then it was like, after that, I gave no fucks. Like when it came to my relationship with my ex, like as far as, you know, being like, oh, I want to re- respect his feelings and like maybe we can make it work. It was like, nope, that with the sense of smell, like I was just like, I'm done, like we're done. Um, and then we, you know, broke up essentially. So in this time we were broken up and trying to figure out how we were going to make this transition into like separating, I had someone come into my life who, spoiler, is my partner now, which everyone's like, I'm sure that's going to be crazy. Um, and it happened so serendipitously, um, and we just connected off like deep Scorpio energy. And, um, you know, my ex would always tell me like, you don't want someone that's into what you're doing and someone that like agrees with everything you say, which my partner now does not agree with everything I say, but he definitely is into spirituality, He's into Lilith. He's into Scorpio, really dark energy. Um, he's into tarot. And I mean, it was just like, he literally is like my best friend. And I'm not, everyone says this about their partner, but literally he's like a really close friend that I can like even dance to Beyonce with. And like, we can blast Beyonce in the car and sing and have like a dance party. And then we have fucking amazing sex afterwards you know or we play with tarot cards or we do a ritual and it's like it just flows it's not me being like babe can we do this together can you you know and it's like so um with that in mind yeah so um you know with all in two months we connected online and what was crazy about it is that um we connected and he had got a reading from me and I realized from where he was from and my one of my best friends is from there and I saw that they were she was like giving him some information on astrology or advice um on my Instagram and I was like oh do you know so and so's from you know Syracuse New York and she is like oh yeah I know him this is like my bandmate's little brother and I was like wait, what? That's interesting. And I mean, still, I wasn't even, it hadn't even gotten to that point where we were like lovers or like definitely connecting from the past. And then it took on this whole spiral, not spiral, but this whole like fast course adventure to him moving out here and us living together and having to find a place in three days. And like, anyways, I'm getting way off topic, but my whole point is, is that I realized sitting here that it is so important to test yourself continuously, step out of your comfort zone and, you know, like taking it moment by moment, because that's what I was doing. You know, like my ex would be like, so what are we going to do about this? And what are we going to do about that? And, you know, you just looking down the road, which is okay. I'm not saying that's not a good thing, but what I'm saying is that, You know, you have to just be in the moment, whatever challenges are happening at today, at this time, deal with that and then move on to the next thing tomorrow, because I feel that so many of us get overwhelmed and it's really hard to take that leap of faith when you are so focused on the future, when in reality you can somewhat change the way that future is written for you. And by what I mean is that you can align with the reality that is, um, you know, the life track that is within the reality that you're wanting. You can't always say exactly what it's going to look like, you know, physically, but when you you can tap into that vibration and that feeling, because that's what's important. Because when you get attached to the 
um, you know, the outlook or, you know, the physical aspect of what you want to manifest or where you want to go, then you kind of lose sight and connection to the, like, you're not in the process. You're thinking like, so for, for example, with myself, I'm just like, you know, obviously I want to have stability. I want to have a foundation so that I can move forward in my, um, with my, my spiritual practice and my astrological counseling and all of those things. And so I want obviously a great partnership, which actually, when I was breaking up with my ex, Matt, I was like, oh, I'm going to be single for forever. Like, you know, I'm all about me. I don't need a partner. I don't need accountability because, you know, I'm doing me and I don't want to have to deal with someone else's comfort zone and their own emotions. And then came in Malachi, who is fucking awesome. And we both challenge each other and we both are very moody and we both are very intense and passionate and very, you know, sexual, which is great. Um, but anyways, so, um, that kind of just happened and people might think I'm crazy. I've had people tell me I'm crazy or that I'm not enlightened or that I'm a bitch and I'm mean, but you know what? Like my intentions, like my actions may, I'm not necessarily being mean. It's more so I'm just following my heart And I can't, you know, I'm following my heart at the moment and I can't say what, you know, I am doing is going to always be the right thing. But at the time it feels right. I try to do things that feel, feels good. I try to be honest with my actions. Um, And so when it comes to me betraying a friend, especially, you know, I'm just going to say one of my best friends um, was supposed to live with me. And obviously I was going to, um, let Malachi move. Well, he wanted to move down too. So I'm like, Oh, that's great. Like, this will be this great house. Like we're going to have all this, like, we're going to manifest so much shit. And she was not down with that. And I basically had to make a choice, you know, and what would anyone in their right mind say? Right bros before hoes or whatever, you know, like, okay, have your friends back because your lover is not going to, this guy, you don't even know this guy really, like you just met him, but I know him more on a very like spiritual psychic level. And I trust my instincts. I trust my intuition and my intuition. Like I would have, it would have been forced not to have him come into my life physically at this moment in time. Like if we were still connecting over the phone, it would have been fucking dumb. Like it would have just been like, it it would have been, yeah. So I had to happen. And so I kind of almost lost a friend in this. And what I'm saying here is that, um, what am I saying? I think I'm saying is what I'm saying is to really, um, you know, trust your instincts, trust your intuition and go from the heart. Like you might hurt someone's feelings, but guess what? That's because they have their own comfort zone. There's a reason why. If you're um, making and taking actions from the heart with high vibration, like, you know, you have good intentions, then ultimately, and you're being true to yourself, then sometimes you have to make that sacrifice. And, you know, ideally hopefully in the end, you'll get both. Because I was really um, surprised that after some time, my friend, she came back around and was like, you know, like, I want to, I still consider you family. And I want to see if we can work this out. And like, how can we do it? So there you have it. And I was felt so grateful, because I felt really, really horrible But it was like, I have to do this. Like my instincts, my guides, my gut is telling me that I have to connect with this person um, on a physical level. Um, And it's been great. And we have a beautiful home together. And like I was saying, some people might think that I'm crazy. But you know what? I'm sorry. I'm not going to operate in the belief systems, even belief systems that I created for myself. Like right away, like, oh, I'm going to be independent. I'm not going to push someone away that I have this deep connection with, you know, because I said, I believe that I need to be independent and not have anyone else's emotions entangled with my own, you know? 
the right one came in. And I think it was releasing that need to be with someone, releasing that need to, um, to, yeah, I guess, you know, I was accepting the fact that I could do it on my own. And actually, I'm not just saying it because like, oh, like we need to be independent. No, I felt that. I was like, no, I got this. Like I'm all about self-reliance, you know? And with that in mind, the universe was like, oh, here you go. Here's a partner that's meant to work with you. And here's the thing, you know, like as time has gone on, there's, it's only been two months since, you know, him and I have been connected. We have been connected for like been talking for months, like very platonically, but it wasn't until we recognized or he said he recognized me initially anyways, but it wasn't until like, it's been two months since I read his email the input he had for um, booking a reading with me, where it's like, tell me about yourself, what's your intention for the reading? That was when, when I read his words, I was like, holy fuck. Like, I couldn't even finish reading it. I had to stop and walk around. I was hot. Like, my whole, like, my vagina was, like, lit. Like, it was just like, <gasps> ah, it was crazy. Um, and ever since that day, you know, I was doing his reading and I like had to like take my sweater off. Like I was just like, oh my God, it's hot in here. I had to stop it and like walk over. Like it was crazy in that it was a feeling that I could not ignore. Just like I couldn't ignore the smell of my ex that like, you know, distinguishing like sense of smell. I couldn't ignore this, uh, this pull to this other person. And so, um, yeah, it was fucking madness. And so, you know, one of the things I also want to mention is just that I, um, you know, I, every so often, because, you know, like you, if you're following your intuition, you're following your heart, your gut, like you're moving, 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 things happen fast. Like, like I was saying, it's been two months since we really connected, connected him, move, him moving out here and us getting a place together two months a little longer than two months and wait, October, November, December. Yeah. A little over two months. And when my mind catches up with this, and this is why the ego is a tricky bitch. It does freak me out a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I'm human. And so I, sometimes I just get this, like, I feel sick and I'm just like, Oh, like, you know, because it feels really good. And then all of a sudden I'm just like, my mind catches in and it's like, girl, do you not see what's going on here? Like what, you, you know, people don't move in with partners until, you know, it's been a couple of years or at least six months or something like you anyways. And so the way I deal with that is to once again, be in the moment, take it day by day and don't attach yourself to the outcomes. Don't even, you know, obviously I have an outcome. I like want to be with this person, you know, for the rest of my life because one, I'm so over, I'm a relationship person and I've been in a relationship after relationship. Yeah. I've had breaks in between. I've been married. Like I thought he was the one he checked out of the relationship. So, you know, for me, it's, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I don't like, and that was why I didn't want to get in another relationship. Cause I'm like, I, I don't want to do this all over again, but obviously I'm full, feeling this pull towards this individual. And so, um, with that in mind, and I don't want to make this too long, what I've learned and what I've come to realize is that, you know, when it comes to manifestation and intention setting, it's really important not to, you know, when you're setting your intentions to obviously have a goal. That's obviously, that's the intention you're setting. You're, you're, you want, you have, you want to manifest this one thing. Um, but the big thing is to, m- associate that manifestation with a feeling. How do you want to feel? How do, how are you going to feel when you do manifest this thing instead of manifesting on the physical aspect of it? Um, the physical result, because usually it's not what you were thinking exactly, but it's better than, you know, anything you could have imagined or expected, you know, and it is what you wanted, but you didn't really know that you wanted that, you know, just like, I didn't know I wanted a partner that was into tarot and spirituality and doing rituals. I mean, obviously 
Like I wanted my partner to do it with me, but I didn't know like that was like kind of a necessity. And even my, I saw an astrologer like a month ago and he was like, your partner, like you need to be like the route that you're on, the path that you're on, like you need to be with someone that is very spiritual um, and very intuitive and acts based on their instincts, which is my partner. Um, and so, and I'm not ashamed to say it. I own all my shit. I own my light. I own my darkness, you know? And so I just try not to think about the end result or where things are going. I just try to take it day by day. And I think that definitely helps out a lot when it comes to, um, you know, um, manifesting your intentions and really aligning with that. So also, Um, what else have I learned at the end of this year? Um, you know, where I am now is so crazy different than what I've ever expected. And, you know, I realized that you can create new belief systems and it's so, so important to, you know, step out of your comfort zone, especially when it's like, you feel like you keep hitting a wall, you know, um, try a different direction, How do you want to feel and just focus on that feeling and make the intention that to align with that life track that is associated with that, that feeling. And, you know, next thing, you know, you will begin to align with that. You know, it took me about a year to get to where I'm now. And last year I was like, I knew I wanted to be an astrologer professionally. I knew I wanted to work with herbs and plants. I always have loved them and my family, my mom, my grandmother have like very strong green thumbs and they're very, very good in the kitchen. Um, and so I knew I wanted to really embody some elements of that within my work. And here I am. Um, I'm an astrologer. I have readings all the time. I work private parties, private readings, astrological counseling, and I am the shop manager of a botanical or a botanica. Um, and I do readings in the shop and I work with community and local artists and I, um, you know, I empower them, which was an element of what I wanted to do. I was just like, I want to empower people to do the same thing that I do. And here I'm doing it. And that took about a year, which I mean, it happened very quickly, but let me remind you when things are in flow, when you trust your intuition, it begins to happen even quicker because like I was saying, what has happened with my partner, um, and me just really, um, being in this relationship, it all happened within two months. And we're both just like, just the way we merged all of our things together and created this home was fucking crazy. So anyways, I just wanted to share that and update this diary of a witch and, I'm thinking I might call it something new this coming year for 2019. So this is going to be the last episode um, of Diary of a Witch. And I will see you in the next year. I love you guys so much. Keep your head up, stay strong, and live in your truth.